September 20th, no, September uh, 23rd or 4th, I don't know the exact date. This was in 2020, outside of where I used to work at, at a mattress and furniture store in West Palm Beach. Toward the end of the night, and that was during the COVID periods, um, I would go out there and I would film. My favorite time to film would always be when the sun was going down or coming up. Reason being is because there are objects flying up there, such as satellites, that reflect based on the Earth's curvature. So they will light up and illuminate before um, the objects down on the surface of Earth because they're higher up. Going out there and filming these white glowing lights, 90% of them are going to be satellites. However, it's a little bit more mysterious than you think. I found out with my own research that by doing that, that is your greatest chance to uncover a UFO. UFOs realize that when you're looking at these white lights, many of them are a little bit of a gold yellowish color. Some of them are bright, bright white, but really they're more yellowish, these satellites. And they move at about 17,000 miles an hour. So they're pretty consistent speeds, the ones that are observable. You're not going to be able to see the ones that are in the geo orbit. That's 25,000 miles away. You're not going to see those. I'm sorry. I don't know why people say, well, maybe this one was in geo orbit. That, that's ridiculous. You're not going to see that. Okay, that's like a needle in a haystack that's the size of five football fields. Good luck. <clears throat> You're seeing low Earth orbit. UFOs and entities and aliens are aware that there are a lot of glowing white objects flying by. However, in my experience, there are some that are going way too slow. And I would argue they're not even in low Earth orbit. They're just probably below that space line, maybe 110, 20, 30,000 feet above us, where most of our aircraft cannot travel. These objects are able to change course. They don't do it drastically, but they'll go from south, and all of a sudden now they're slightly turning to southeast or southwest. Um, I've actually seen two glowing spheres come together and then go straight across the sky. That's another encounter story I can share. And then I see that these objects brighter than the space station. I've seen the space station. I've observed the space station. I've filmed the space station. I've timed it. And these objects are bigger and brighter. So something's not adding up. And they're very, very, very slow. If you want to see a UFO and film one, I'm going to give you a blueprint that no one in this world will ever share with you. Get up before the sun rises and go out before the sun sets. Yes, you will be filming a lot of satellites. Sooner or later, based on the effort that you put into this, you're going to get something. Congratulations, you got your first UFO. That's a promise. And it's a big secret. They're not all satellites. No one in this world will tell you that. September 2020, I go back outside where I work. The video is on YouTube. Go back to that time frame and you'll see it. I might have uploaded in October or September. The feedback on that is that the UFO that I filmed is so magnificent because it actually shapeshifts. It is so unbelievable that it just can't be real. So, For those of you that want to film your own UFOs, you have to be ready to swallow that pill.
because that's what's going to happen. You're out there long enough and hard enough, and you're out there and you're trying and trying and trying. The entities are going to know that. I'm talking about the creator, God, or aliens that are outside of this simulation. They're going to know that. And you're going to get your moment. You get your 15 minutes of fame in their world. <laughs> I go outside, it's mostly cloudy, a little bit kind of damp, a lot of moisture, um, not a good night for visibility. And lo and behold, over the Atlantic Ocean were Trump lifts. <laughs> a little side note, we don't chase the UFOs that fly by. That's Hollywood. Oh, the helicopters were there, and the, we had the F-18 fighter jets. No. The UFO that I filmed, that's on YouTube, and you can see it, was shape-shifted, by the way, which I'm the, one of the only civilians ever that I'm aware of that actually filmed a shape-shifting UFO and got it on 1080p. The whole thing. Not one helicopter flew by. And this is over our president's home around that time. Donald Trump. Nothing. They can't stop it. They can't see it. They can't get on it. They can see the radar. Oh, they know that happened. They know that something flew by. They just didn't know that I recorded it. Some people do. Um, they do nothing. Because our military can't do anything. They can't do anything. Remember, side note number two. During the Nimitz encounter, the white Tic Tac knew the rendezvous point the second the general thought of it for the coordinates of where the F-18 pilots should meet up to discuss about the encounter they just witnessed. The Tic Tac went there before the order was even given out. You know what that tells you? That our consciousness comes from the origin of where that Tic Tac comes from. Because they could read the thoughts before they were even given the order. There's no other way to explain that. General thinks about the coordinates. Boom, Tic Tac knows about it. See ya. Or maybe the Tic Tac told it and gave the conscious data stream to that general to think of those coordinates. Maybe that'll bake your noodle. Either way, it doesn't matter which way it happened. It happened, which means... They know what you're thinking. <laughs> no one's going to tell you that either. Go outside to work. Cloudy. Not very good visibility. Looking over the ocean. Not over the ocean. I'm far away from the ocean, but I'm looking out east. I'm in South Florida, West Palm, and I'm just filming anyways because that's what I do. That's who I was at that time. And I see this light. I said, oh, wow, it's a plane far away, but it looked really high. <laughs> I'm like, oh, look at this. Maybe a satellite or something? This is really bright. No. It came shooting like a missile, like a nuclear warhead was flying right toward me. I wasn't afraid. You can't be. I was excited. My cameras are ready. I'm out there. I'm recording. Wow, look at this thing, like a shooting star coming lower and lower and lower toward me. I said to myself, my God, they must have known. They must have knew I was out here with my camera. This is a gift. And it was, they had to have known. This creator, this aliens outside of this world that we live in, this universe, knew that I had the camera ready. Because the second I walked out there, within three seconds of turning that camera on, that ball of light came flying right toward me. Comes down, it's way up there. It's 100,000 feet in the air. Shh, getting lower, getting lower, getting lower. I'm like, oh my God, what is this? This is unbelievable. I was super going crazy. Press the record button, thing drops even lower. The thing's probably about a couple hundred feet above my head. I zoom in on it. It's a silverish, metallic look, gray. Turns into a triangle. 
turns into a long cigar, breaks apart, turns into brown colors, turns into uh, a teepee, turned into a pyramid, the pyramid broke in half, turned into a humanoid face, pink, green, colors I can't explain, it's on the video. It was molding into everything and anything, beings, people, uh, all different types of entities. I saw a snake figure with a human head. I saw a guy look like a Michelin Tyler man that had all these black rings around him and green hands and a green face with no face, though. I saw a guy that was as wide as a, hippo, a rhinoceros that had a hat like a jester. His line was through the, uh, the center of his head. He had two eyes, and this guy was about as wide as six feet. It was like a, it was like a rhinoceros human thing. It was unbelievable. And you could see this light bellowing from the slits of his outfit, which was a dark black color. And every line that had light would burst out. It was like it made out of light, this creature. It was massive. And then it had this very weird elongated man, like a snake man, right next to it. And then they would collapse in on each other and created, a, like I said, a totem pole. They created an Eiffel Tower type design that broke into pieces. And then it formulated into like a cube. And then that broke into uh, humanoid entities. You could see hair. You could see watery type substances. You could see uh, gold and different types of colors. You could see eyes. You could see teeth. You could see uh, dirt, clay. It just, it was un. Unimaginable to comprehend. I got it. When it came low, it went right to me. That's a gift from God. That's a gift from the creator itself. For all the hard work I put into this. And as I was filming it, you have to understand, I want to share some details. As you're filming this object, it would be here, 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 here. So I'm just trying to, my camera's like, whoa, it was here. It doesn't move linear. It can be here. Now it's here. Now it's there. It's almost as fast as disappearing. It's an instantaneous change shape bang over here, change this shape bang over here, over here, over here, over here. The colors were a mixture of regular primary colors, but they had a metallic color, like a reflection of metal rainbow colors, regular pastel colors and primary colors and then they had an electrified color so it was like three different types of colors like a metal reflecting color a metal like metallic color regular colors and then illuminated light colors and then these other colors could uh cover another color and then boom you would see the color underneath it or it break through and then but it never broke through the colors that it didn't want to break through It actually collapsed into a home, a garden, trees, plants. It was unbelievable. And then it was right over my head and I'm filming it. And now I'm realizing it's a hundred feet above me. So I was still filming it, but I took my eye off the viewfinder at the end. And it turned it to this pyramid, collapsed in on itself like a wave, went back like a bunch of little cubes, created this Eiffel Tower. That bent in half into two separate pieces, turned into a triangle again, collapsed again. And it turned into um, a wooden totem pole. And then those faces broke off and turned into beings. And then all of a sudden the roof came and it had an electrified glowing gold look to it with brown spewing out. I can't explain. I'm happy I filmed that with the viewfinder, but I saw that part with my own eyes. And I'll tell you the feeling. It's crazy exciting but there's a certain sadness to it because I knew that the rest of my life I'm probably never going to get that close something 60 70 feet above my head shape-shifting and I'm never going to see anything do that again 
That's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I don't care if we have holograms. I don't care if we have Octa HD or any type of beautiful super AMOLED panel television. I don't care what the graphics are. I don't care what our technology does. I will never see anything do that. I will never see uh, physical objects break apart, turn into something else, turn into something else, break apart, turn into something else from a liquid to a gas to a solid to whatever, a plasma. I'm never going to see that amount of detail. I will never probably see that ever again in my life. And I had that feeling. And every word that I'm using to explain it does not give it any justice whatsoever. I'm not even able to articulate 10% of what I saw. <laughs> when I got done, I was just ecstatic. I'm like, oh, this was light speed and all this stuff was going through my head. But like I said, at, after that excitement, I, I felt that sadness that this was it. This was that moment. And it all happened when I went outside and the second I put my camera up and pressed record is when that light came. They know your thoughts. And I learned something that night. If you want to see something that's a miracle or something that's impossible or things that you can't do, because everybody thinks they can't do it, because they're not a Stephen Greer or a Louis Elizondo or a Tom DeLong, you know, or Nick Pope or whoever these guys are. People think they can't, they're not them, so they can't do it wrong. You can. Those guys can't get all this stuff. They have to go to a desert to find that stuff. Think about it. You can do it. In fact, it's looking for people that are not these quasi celebrity who think they're the messiahs of the UFO world, that ego is too big for those people. They don't want them. They want you. They knew I was out there. They knew I pressed record. They knew I was out there just giving it a shot, seeing if anything came up. And it came exactly when I pressed record. They know your thoughts. And the biggest lesson I learned that night is that if you believe in something, you really believe in it with your heart and your mind, you can manifest it. You have to, to believe in it before you can even see it. And if you can believe in it before you s even see anything, you're already halfway there. The most important thing is to believe that it's possible. Whatever you want to see, just believe it, be passionate, and put the effort into it, and it will happen. If you don't believe in it, it's not going to. When I saw that star move, I said to myself that night, I had this feeling, anything's possible. Well, it was. The daytime star, people couldn't see it, except for the young girl. Why? Why? belief systems. You have to believe in it in order to see it. I felt really wonderful after that experience. I felt all my hard work had paid off, even though I had plenty of other encounters, nothing like that. And I got a shape-shifting entity. That is a grand slam in a baseball game, not just a home run. I got the grand slam. They gave it to me. It was a gift. There is something greater than yourself that's listening to you. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. This was a real encounter. I really did film it. Nobody has ever debunked it because they can't. But they don't want to believe it. Because it's just too good. How could somebody walk out there with a camera and press record and this thing happens, right? It's just impossible. Not if you're trying to record every day, twice a day, and work all the time, and put and record 20,000 hours of nothing. <laughs> Think about that. See, 
It took me years, five years of, of recording before I finally got something like that. And maybe 20,000 tries. So it's not lucky. I earned it. People don't think that. Oh, he just got out of there and just put... What about all the other times I did that for years and I got nothing? How about those 10,000 times outside of work and I got nothing? Seriously. Multiple times a day. Nothing, nothing, nothing. But I never gave up. The choice is yours. The answers are there. Are you brave enough to accept the truth? Are you brave enough to go on your journey? Don't believe me. I hope nobody does. I'm doing this for my own digital diary. But maybe I can inspire one person. I don't need to go to Dr. Greer for answers. I don't need to go to Louis Elizondo or Tom. I don't need to hear any of that nonsense. George Knapp, Bob Lazar, none of it. I got my answers. And next week, I'm going to talk to you about what I observed. This was in uh, July of 2019 when I saw an object materialize right in front of me. I'm going to tell you how it happened and how it works. Thank you for listening.